Imagine the moment when a harmless flyby turns into a different story overnight. For months, 3I at Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor, looked set to glide past Mars, warm near the Sun, and fade. Then the numbers moved. New orbit fits tightened. The light grew in ways it shouldn't. The chemistry bent the rules. And a handful of strange claims, some published, some still whispers, pushed the conversation from interesting comet to what exactly are we looking at? Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb has been blunt. 3i Atlas may be a piece of alien technology. You don't have to agree to appreciate why the idea even hits the table. The trajectory is unusually neat. The plane of motion hugs the same flat sheet the planets live in. The early brightening far from the sun was five times stronger than simple physics predicted. And spectra from the very large telescope show nickel strong while iron hides. A duet with one voice when in space those metals usually sink together. Let's step through this carefully, human, simple, honest. 3i Atlas isn't from our backyard. It was born around another star and flung into the dark. That alone makes it precious. Umuamua 2017 threw out the rule book by accelerating without a visible tail. Borisov 2019 followed the rules like a perfect student. 3i Atlas is a third lesson. Bright coma and tail, yes but almost no rocket push in the orbit, a chemistry puzzle and a track that behaves as if it likes the lanes we use. Speed sets the tone. Reports put 3i Atlas at 60 to 87 kilometers per second relative to the sun during this inbound leg. That's fast enough to cross the Earth-Moon gap in roughly an hour and a half. It's already inside Jupiter's orbit. Perihelion arrives in late October. Before that, a close pass by Mars in early October will give us a front row seat from orbit. Afterward, December may be our best window for longer exposures from Earth. The Mars flyby is where quiet assumptions started breaking. Early solutions showed a comfortable miss. Neofits from multiple teams argue the geometry is tighter, perhaps within a few million kilometers. That is not the same as impact warning but it's close enough that tiny forces matter. Minute thrusts, sunlight pressure and gas jets can all add up to tens of millions of kilometers. That's why Mars missions and ground stations are measuring as hard as they can. Meanwhile, something odd started happening in the numbers. The coma brightened smoothly and too early. TESS, ZTF and ATLAS, three independent surveys found a five-fold rise before water ice should be active. That suggests CO2 waking up far out or a dust distribution that amplifies reflected light. Either could be natural. The scale and timing still make people frown. Nature, when it surprises us, tends to surprise us loudly and irregularly. This was steady, like a program ramping power. The chemistry twist is harder to wave away. Nickel lines stand tall in the spectra. Iron lines are faint or missing. In most comets, iron and nickel appear together because star-forged dust mixes them at birth. You can cook up edge-case explanations. Nickel carbonyl vaporizes at lower temperatures, selective sputtering under odd radiation, birth in a weird disk. But all of those are maybe with no perfect fit. Nickel without iron stays one of the strangest signatures on the board. Now layer on motion. When gas blows off, it pushes the nucleus. That's why orbit fits for comets include non-gravitational acceleration. Borisov drifted 10 km per day and the data and jet models matched neatly. 3i Atlas, despite a healthy coma and tail in images, shows a drift so small it surprises modelers. Either the vents are arranged so their pushes cancel perfectly as the object spins or thrust is being routed or absorbed in ways we don't usually see. A shell can do that, so can control. Then came the claim that changed the room's temperature. A neat, repeating pulse in gas production, about once in 17 minutes, synchronized for days, 
and pointed in ways that align the path with Mars's orbital plane. Normal jets don't do that. They erupt when sunlight hits a fresh patch of ice and those eruptions are messy. A metronome belongs to machines and clockwork, not to random cracks and stress. If multiple instruments confirm that rhythm across multiple nights, it's a pivotal result. Now here's the part that's easy to misunderstand. The impact on Mars scenario is a possibility tree, not a prediction. Earth isn't in the line of fire. We're on the opposite side of the sun at perihelion. A direct hit would take a narrow sequence of small pushes lined up just right. Could gas pulses steer it? Maybe. Tiny sidewise thrusts at the right times can close a missed distance by tens of thousands of kilometers. Spacecraft do it all the time. The open question isn't could pulses steer it? It's what is doing the pulsing? If the answer is sunlight and geometry, we'll see signatures that fit. If the answer is systems wrapped in ice, the beat will tell on itself. Another thread in the conversation points to where 3 i Atlas came from. Its inbound path traces back towards Sagittarius, the same broad sky region that hosted the famous 1977 WOW signal. That's an intriguing coincidence, not a link. Space is big, alignments happen, but coincidences do make people look twice. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as we don't staple mythology onto data. Dark forest thinking creeps in here for a reason. If the galaxy is dangerous, quiet exploration makes sense. Civilians hide beacons, machines pass as rocks, trajectories use the ecliptic to sniff multiple planets in one pass. None of that proves anything about intent. It just supplies a frame for why a probe, if there is one, would blend in rather than broadcast. The better our measurements, the less we need to lean on stories. So what do we test next? First, the clock. High cadence light curves from multiple observatories should hunt for a 17-minute beat. If it holds through changing phase angles, that's big. Second, the chemistry. Watch CO2 at 4.3 micrometers, CN and C2, the green comet makers, and water lines in the near IR. If CO2 stays king even when water should bake, note it. If nickel stays loud and iron stays quiet across nights and geometries, that's a signature that sticks. Third, the heat. Infrared curves should warm with sunlight and cool without. Neat plateaus or repeating pulses are suspicious. Fourth, the motion. Fit gravity, sunlight pressure and rocket thrust from gas. Chart the residuals in a body fixed frame. If they point the same way night after night, something is pushing the same direction each time. Fifth, polarization. Light scattered by dust tells you grain sizes and structures, which helps you nail down whether brightness rides on dust tricks or real gas output. Mars is the perfect laboratory. Maven can read plasma and fields. ExoMars TGO can watch gases. MRO's high-rise might catch a streak that tells us how the coma flows. If any orbiting instrument sees a pulse in sync with Earth-based light curves, the case tightens. If the orbit kinks near Mars in a way that gravity can't supply, the case tightens more. If neither happens, that's a lesson too. Let's say the pulses are real. How could a natural object do that? One idea, deep repeating thermal stress opens and closes vents on a timer as a nucleus spins. Another, subsurface CO2 pockets breathe as pressure cycles. A third, dust avalanches uncover fresh ice at regular intervals. Nana Prezi, all require a very particular setup. The simplest machine explanation is not automatically the right one. It's just simpler. Interception and defense questions are floating in the background. Should we try to catch an interstellar object? We probably can't on this timeline. Should we talk about deflection or destruction? Not for Mars. This isn't an Earth threat case. But the fact that serious people are even drafting what-if lines for planetary defense shows how quickly the mood can shift when geometry tightens and behavior looks deliberate. Debate is healthy, panic is not. Community scientists matter right now. If you own a decent scope or even binoculars and dark skies, you can help. Watch the AAVSO, ICQ and COBS for calls. Log your times, gear and locations. Share raw stacks and calibrated frames, not just pretty composites. 
if you catch a sudden brightening a tail kink or a suspected disconnection event compare notes before you file a report clean data helps the people doing the hard fits swan c/2025 r2 deserves a footnote in this story it's big bright and on track for an october 2021 close pass at about 0.26 au under a new moon if you've never hunted a faint iron tail those are prime nights give your eyes time to adapt use 7 by 50 or 10 by 50 binoculars bring patience the sky rewards people who let it safety belongs in the script never point optics anywhere near the sun without iso certified filters mounted over the front of the lens never use eyepiece filters to play it safe they aren't for dawn or dusk attempts near perihelion if you are not 100% sure it's safe skip it no comet is worth your eyes you will hear talk about radar echoes unlike anything triangle glints in mars orbit classified plans and emergency task forces treat them as background noise until the data come out it's normal for agencies to verify before speaking it's also reasonable for the public to ask for transparency once checks are done the antidote to rumor is measurement preferably in the open omua mua taught us what regret feels like we argued while it left we missed our best window 3i ats gives us a second chance to do this the right way measure first argue second share fast let the data outrun the drama if a natural model can hold all these oddities at once celebrate it if it can't be ready to say what the numbers actually show what about the nuclear powered line you may have heard that comes from a simple brightness argument if all the light we see were reflected off a solid body with no dust help the coal would have to be enormous it's a thought experiment not a diagnosis most of the light we see in comets is dust glow not core shine but the phrase is sticky because it focuses on the deeper question if there is a steady tidy power source under the ice we'll see it in heat not just light tie all the threads together and the picture looks like this 3i ats is an interstellar traveler with early unusual brightening nickel without iron a healthy coma but very small orbital rift and alleged gas pulses that could steer its path hugs the plane of the planets and runs near mars the sun is loud cme is a punching tails people are watching the stakes feel high because the window is narrow if it's natural the prize is big we'll learn how alien isis behave we'll sharpen models for jets dust and early activation we'll understand the boundary between a weird comet and an edge case if it's not natural if control sits under the ice the prize is bigger and it arrives with responsibilities the first evidence we're not alone might not come as a radio hello it might come as a traveler that makes choices we can read in timing and heat either way we'll know more soon the mars pass will speak perihelion will pass the coma the light curve will either keep its beat or lose it the chemistry will either invite water to the party or let co2 staking the numbers will answer not narratives and until then step outside on clear nights find mars rising somewhere near its path a visitor from another sun is threading the eye of a cosmic needle maybe a rock born strange maybe a vehicle wrapped in ice the sky won't tell you which in words it will tell you in tiny changes you can measure if you're patient keep your eyes open keep your standards high and keep a corner of your mind ready for answers you didn't plan for that's how we meet moments like this by paying attention better than we did the last time